And we're live. <laughs> and I have sunglasses on my hat. I had all that time and I still left them on my hat. Welcome, folks, to Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Kat. We are here this evening to talk to you about how to build a better dog. But before we get into our topic of the evening, we like to make a few announcements, welcome you all to the Bird Dog Chat, and do some check-ins. So let's roll through some check-ins first, and then we'll move on to some more announcements. So a few of you guys were here early. We've got uh, Statesboro, Georgia. Hey, Brad. And seeing how uh, you can win a bed for Turbo. Awesome. Awesome. We've got uh, Lone Oak and Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Hey, Aaron from Minnesota. Thanks for uh, the live super chat as well, Aaron. We really appreciate that. And congrats. Charles is here. He's off screen, but he will be piping in. But um, Charles and Thunder did awesome. They got a prize three at their Navda utility test at the Black Hills chapter uh, this last weekend. So we were going to talk about that. But, you know, announcements kind of let the cat out of the bag early. Uh, we got Western Australia, our first international check-in. Ba-da-ba-da. And what are we doing international check-ins for or any of the check-ins for? It's bird, dog, chat, bingo. Oh, wow. There's already a whole bunch of cards in play. If you don't know how to get your card, patreon.com slash standingstonekennels. It's actually back a couple posts, but it's not too far down the list, I don't believe. Mm, I'm sure Charles Three has posts it. down. Yeah, there it is. So, if you want to play along with the bingo cards for Bird Dog Chat, you do need to be a patron, but you can join for as little as five dollars a month. Then you get your cool bingo card, and these are ooh, just ooh, ooh. silly idiosyncrasies and things that we end up doing throughout the evening. And you can mark your boxes just like in bingo. Then you call Thunder out box. bingo, type out bingo, and um, if your card qualifies in the sense that we actually talked about those things that you marked down you get to win a caranda dog bed this night this evening we've been trying to give one away for a couple uh bird talk chats and no bingos have been had so Ms. hopefully Ms. we can get Kelly's one tonight been making it too difficult i guess can yeah I she just, updated some of them can i just click this one now right there someone name someone's name gets mispronounced <laughs> it's probably gonna happen i'll wait till it happens Stony Creek in the house. Hey, Angelo. And we've got uh, melting away in hot Atlanta, Georgia. I think it's hot all over the place. It's, it was 100 degrees here today. I think that's pronounced Atlanta, Georgia. It says hot Atlanta. Do you need to, do you need to squint? <laughs> Southern California, Central Missouri. How did you do that? Like, how did you make that off the screen now? What did you do? Stop I did, that. I didn't do it. Okay, you did do it, but there. Okay. How did you make it back uh, on the screen? By scrolling. Right, Central Missouri, fast becoming the Dust Bowl. Ooh, it's kind of droughty everywhere, too. Marianne in a way too hot Atlanta. Apparently, that's a thing, hot Atlanta now. Uh, Mission, Kansas. Hey, Ian, thanks for checking in. Pretty Prairie Annie in the house, literally, in the, the studio. We've got uh, bingo and beer. I'm ready. Ob absolutely. Oh, Angleton, Texas. Remember, I figured out how to say this one one of these last weeks. Uh, Iowa, we've got Waterford, Wisconsin, Oregon here, Mount Vernon, Washington, Tallahassee, Florida, South Carolina, South Dakota, Minot, North Dakota, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Bong. Australia, another international check-in. Whoop, whoop. Hey, hey. hey Miss Kelly, you're here from New Jersey, Texas, Illinois, Lakeville, Minnesota. Checking in from Sturgis, South Dakota. Wiki Watchy, Florida. Yay, I got to say it. Queensland, Australia. We've got three Australians here. And I get it. I get Australia is a big continent. But do y'all know each other? <laughs> <laughs> you guys like live next door or something, uh, but I get it. It's, it's big, but still, it's really cool that there's three people from Australia here. Maine, tid, Tiddy Out, Pennsylvania. Totally butchered that one. Sorry, guys. Southeast Kansas, 
Iowa. Go Charles and Thunder. Whoop, whoop. Another shout out for you, buddy. Hotlanta is definitely a thing. Thief River Falls, Minnesota, Salina, Texas, Brazil. Woo woo. Another international check in. Another shout out, Charles, from Miss Kelly. And I'm in Brazil. Beat that. LOL. <laughs> checking in from Indiana. Awesome, guys. Thanks for all the check ins. We really appreciate, appreciate you guys being here with us this evening. And from Michigan now, Virginia. They're just rolling. They're going to keep rolling in. Uh, if you are new to our bird dog chats, we kind of have an order of events. So uh, we do some of these check-ins. We talk about bingo. So you can get your bingo cards early because we're going to do a giveaway for the Coranda dog bed this evening for the first bingo winner. Uh, then we do a few announcements. We do a topic of discussion of the evening, which is going to be how to build a better dog. And then hopefully giving away that crown to bed towards the end there, and then answering your guys' questions. So we will roll into answering questions. I think I saw one pop in, at least one already. So we'll try and scroll back and get to those. Otherwise, if you've got one that's burning a hole in your pocket, you can absolutely uh -huh. put a super chat in. What Did you make me a sandwich? A knuckle sandwich. Ah, I knew you were going to say that. At least that's what I was going to say. I'm surprised you came up with it. Like, that's funny. I was funny. Yeah. Write it down. <laughs> Love you too, babe. Oh, so let's go ahead and... Serious talk. <laughs> punny. Um, talk about a few announcements that we've got coming up. So one of the things that we wanted to mention is we are doing a seminar in New Jersey. Boop. In September, mm -hmm. it's the Griffin and Howe seminar. It is announced on our Patreon page um, as well. I don't know how many spots are left. I think you said it at least one or only one. only announced originally on Patreon because there were only a few spots left. So I wanted uh, the extra special folks to get the first opportunity to go out. I don't know where he's currently at, but I recently talked and he said, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can take any more people. I said, well, I had some other, he said, oh, maybe one or two. just have them call me anyway. And we'll see, we'll see, see if we, we can got. make it work. So awesome. So we're going to be doing that here in September out in New Jersey, which is exciting. Um, also at game fair in August uh, in Anoka, Minnesota, we've been there for years and years. Uh, they had a little Since hiatus. Since back when it started in 1962. No, we were not there then. But nice try, sweetie. Uh, but there was a little break during, you know, COVID where they weren't doing those. But we have been back there for the last couple years. This year is going to be really exciting. We're going to be there for Ukanuba's booth and DT Systems booth. Actually, actually, um, the first weekend I will be at Ukanuba's booth. I'm going to be doing a seminar as well. And then Ethan will be at DT Systems booth that first weekend. And then... Um, we're not necessarily going to flip flop because I'm not going to be at DT systems booth the following weekend and Ethan will be at Yukonuba. So, um, and he'll be doing a seminar as well. So if you are interested, if you're in the area, come on out. Game fair is awesome. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday outdoor expo for outdoor 82. stuff. Sorry. Uh, we still have not been going since 1982 either, but, <laughs> um, so check it out. Shoot us messages if you have questions about either of these seminars or either of these events, and we can get you some more information. Welcome to Game Fair, everybody. Yeah, I think they've had, like, the same announcer there for... Since it started. <laughs> Probably. Um, well, we have... I don't know the seminar times slots. Not and yet. If, uh, Aaron, if you're talking seminars at Game Fair... I don't know those time slots yet. I'm not um, sure exactly when they get announced. It or does finalized. get listed online. So that information will be there as well as we'll share it because that was a thing that happened last year um, and the year before that and the year before that. These people said, we came to see your seminar and missed it. So uh, we don't want that to happen. Yeah, so as soon as we know, we'll start making announcements on social media, our newsletter, things like that, so you guys will get some updates as well as that game fair website would be a good option to to be able to find out the seminar schedules as it gets closer. So, let's talk about puppies. 
Do you want to do you want to do any of these announcements or is it all me? It's you. You're good at it. Okay, puppies, guys. So I know that Ethan said no puppies in 2023, and I'm sure we all heard that at least a half a dozen times or more. But guess what? We're keeping a puppy from the shock dock litter. And but by we, she doesn't mean me. <laughs> no, we are having um, <laughs> friends of ours and. Uh, Dustin, who does all of our videography and video editing, he is going to be helping raise this little guy for us, uh, with his family. He's got three little kids and they are, um, super adorable. They get along so good with Aiden and Cade and they're going to be helping, uh, raise this little guy for us for our El Tesoro program. And we're going to be announcing him on social media here in the next day or two, but we are struggling and this is not something that I usually struggle with. We are struggling. Yep, it's a shock puppy and Doc from Aspen Hill Kennels. If you go to the litter, up planned litters, it should be up there, Charles. You're under just our breeding page. Um, but I am struggling, guys, to come up with a puppy name. What about pedigree? It's wicked. I'm not normally this um, blank when it comes to puppy names. And this is a hawk. From the shock doc litter. Ethan jokingly referred to this litter as my uh, Dr. Seuss litter because all of the puppies rhymed because of shock and doc, which shock and doc rhymed. So I thought it would be hilarious. And it really was until you were trying to call them all in from the puppy pen. And then you're like, rock, shock, doc, hawk, knock, lock. And you're like, okay, too many ox out here. Um, and it was so funny because lock and stock always hung out together, it seemed like. And I'm like, lock, stock. And, and two, two smoking, smoking barrels. barrels. Exactly. <laughs> so Charlie, I sent you a picture. Can you pull that up on me? Yeah. So this is the little dude. He's going to get announced, like I said, on social. But if you guys have name ideas for him, please throw it in the comments. Uh, We're going to be asking on social media as well for some input. Um, it will be starting. His registered name will be Standing Stones, El Tesoro, and then whatever. Um and then his call name will be whatever. It could be Hawk. It could be something else. Uh, we are just not sure yet what we're going to do. For example, um, Journey, which is Glitch's sister. She is a puppy that we kept back for the El Tesoro program as well that is being raised by one of our trainers, Tessa. Ooh, make it bigger. Yeah, there he is. There's the Hawkster. Um, and Journey's name is Standing Stones El Tesoro Enjoy the Ride. So kind of cool to come up with plays on words and things like that. And I usually am really dang good at this. I mean, even if I have to say so myself, I'm really, really good at naming puppies and I am drawing a blank. So if you've got ideas, throw them my way. Uh, what? Oh, this is this is definitely your puppy announcement next. Mm. I get to uh, travel to the great state of Georgia right not, down there by not in Hotlanta, though. Right, very close to Hotlanta, um, and pick up a new English Cocker puppy out of Bunny, the Energizer Cocker Bunny. Whew. I don't know what I've signed up for, but I'm he, excited. He said no puppies in 2023, and apparently that was related to GSP puppies, so he thought a Cocker puppy would be better. Mm, no, see, still not me raising the puppy. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure we're raising this one. Uh-uh. And that there's going to be a video series about this puppy. Yeah, I'll train it for a video series. <laughs> but it's not living with us? I don't know. Just come pick it up every morning at the, <laughs> the puppy raising facility. Also known as... Nope, I have my own cocker puppy. <laughs> has not been confirmed yet, so... No, it is not. We'll see. We're hoping. It's, a, it's about to be confirmed. <laughs> But <laughs> when I go pick it up in July, <laughs> this will just be like a couple weeks practice before your puppy comes home. Then, puppy wars, the cocker puppy wars. Oh, my cocker is gonna be so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you the dollar. Uh, no, I have to keep it. 
Um, anyway, so uh, this will be win. fun, though. This puppy series will be really fun. We've done, you know, multiple short hair puppy raising series. We've done a couple lab puppy series. And now we're going to get to raise and film a series with this little cocker. And uh, those will be on YouTube. And they'll be helping to flesh out our retriever course, which is on standingstonesupply.com. So the thing about the course, which is really cool, if you didn't know, is you get signed up, you pay your one-time fee, and you get access to it all right away. It's not a, you know, slowly trickling out the information. You get it all at once, um, and it's for the lifetime of the course. So basically, you buy it once, you always get it. So if you have a puppy now, and in five years, you get a new puppy, you can go back and use the same course, um, same lessons, same step-by-step plan. And every time we film a new video that I feel is an asset to adding to the course, um, or we come up with more information that I want to um, add, every time I edit it, you also get access to all of those updates. So kind of a cool uh, little piece of resource for you, if you if you will. And we'll be adding some more um, flushing portions with that little Cocker Puppy series to the course as well. So um, I've had a few people asking uh, about Hex. I would play my little trumpet now, but we can't. What's that mean? <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. No. So Hex is fine. He is four weeks down on his activity restriction, which means he's got four weeks to go, guys. And for this nine-month-old puppy, he's actually – I think he's ten months old now. Uh, he's – I mean, he does get older. Uh, but he is actually doing remarkably well – We actually don't even have him on trazodone anymore, and so he's staying calm in his space, chewing on lots and lots of dog bones, but as soon as you try and get him out of that crate, he is turning into a little ping pong ball, so we still have to keep him on leash for all of his outside potty breaks and things like that, Um, and he is not really able to do any formalized training sessions currently because he just, um, like I said, you take him out of there, and he is on fire. The interesting thing was that uh, somebody said to me, oh, I see a new series coming, what to do when you can't do anything or whatever. And literally the instructions from the vet clinic say, do nothing. He can't go for a walk. He can't do anything. Or there's the potential that his chest will not heal properly. And they'll either, I mean, they like they misalignment would have to, and have to have re-break to his chest open yes. again. And so... He is, he, unfortunately, tough love is the category here, and he gets to chew on dog bones in his extra large wire crate. The Mm. only time that I will use a wire crate. Well, and the reason we use a wire crate is because they don't make clamshell crates that big. So we're giving him plenty of room. He can completely lay down, stretch out, stand up without touching any side of the entire Basically, it's airline approved sizing, (laughs) but... His Stand favorite up, way to sit lay down, pick a bale of cotton. is to be on his back in the corner with his feet straight up in the air. Yeah, oh, he's not related to puppy. Vex at yeah. all. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yep. Um, so, but he's coming along well. His healing is coming along. So, four more weeks and we will be able to get back after it slowly, but surely. So, he's doing good. Speaking of videos and things that we have on the docket. Something that we have been asked about as well for a while, and I've been really excited to put this together, and finally was like, now is the time we put together a whelping facility tour of our whelping facility. Oh, yeah. A whelping facility tour of our whelping facility. So. Just a facility tour. But only of the whelping portion. We're going to put another one together of the entire kennel, but we have not gotten to that yet either. Uh, It's on the list. But... I'm excited for it. It should be coming out, I hope, next week if it's all edited and ready to go. But um, hopefully you guys get a chance to watch it and like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel and thumbs up it and comment on it and all the things. It's going to be awesome. (laughs) I don't know if I have any other announcements. I've kind of done my thing. You did your thing. Now... Read, read the notes no, that you put No, I'm down. not doing the entire <laughs> Build a Better Dog by myself. But you're the best person to build a better dog. The um, 
real fact of the matter is here, folks, that uh, Kat is what drives everything here, which is why she says, what announcements do we have for this week? And I'm like, I don't know, honey. I'm listening. What do you got? Uh, Somebody's got to stay organized around here. That would be you. Um, we talk about build a better dog, and we bring in a number of different pieces. Okay? This is not specifically about training, per se, as it's much more about a philosophy and some of the things to apply to what you're doing from a training standpoint and how to approach situations. This is a, a broad spectrum thought process that you can include in what we have a ton of videos of, which is just basic ideas for training sessions, right? This is how to do a better job utilizing those and to do a better job within your sessions. And one of the most important things that we have would be, and we say this on a regular basis, but it's to be intentional. And I think that that applies to, I soak in that note there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Use a coaster. That's what we got them for. Got it. Sweet. So I'm um, being intentional and that applies to a lot of different things that you want to excel at through life. Okay. If you have plans and you have intentionality applied to what you're doing, you're going to move in a better direction. Now, um, with that specifically, you need to know where you're going. So that's the training plan. Now we have laid out a training plan for you, but if you want to do it on your own, that's fantastic. You need to know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, it's easy to flounder or get stuck or, you know, do all of the things in a not the right order. Basically getting stuck, okay? Or just not knowing what it should look like or what the next step is. So you just repeat this first step over and over and over or too much before you're moving on to the next piece of training because you don't know where you're going. And that falls in pretty heavily to something that I talk to people about on a regular basis. So via Patreon, we kind of mentioned that, but didn't really get into it. Thank you, patrons, the largest supporter of everything Standing Stone. Um, We appreciate y'all and are happy to help. But one of the number one things that we see there is, and, and in just questions in general when we're helping folks, is we see doing what they can do and not what they need to do. And I strongly recommend, so listen to that again. I strongly recommend that people do what they need to do with their dogs and not what they can do. Now, it sounds a little bit tough, right? I mean, that's a big thought process. Um, and not a big thought process, but it's, it's a big thing to think about, okay? I can do this, right? I can go in the backyard. I can throw bumpers. I can do this little tiny routine obedience session that we've done a thousand times now or something like that. And what I really need to be doing is working toward X, Y, and Z, which is part of having a training plan, right? And the thing is, what happens is what you need to do isn't always easy. And it takes more more planning, more forethought, more equipment, more setup, another person. And so those things that you might need to do pushed off and pushed off or just not even thought about it all because you don't have birds, you don't have launchers, you don't have a second person to throw bumpers for you, you don't have property to go out on. And so instead of reaching out to training groups that you could join that may have access to live birds, that may have access to grounds and equipment that you can help be a part of and not just mooch that stuff, um, but help other people that might need another person to throw a bumper or to paddle out in a kayak and plant a duck, you know, find a group that would want to help you so that you can help them. You're going to learn a lot from that, but then you can maybe get done what you need to do, not just what you can do in your backyard by yourself. Now, there's a lot of big commitments that come into this and different parts of the country have different opinions, but it is all relative. Uh, I think, Charles, we were talking about the other day, um, the South Texas guys and their chapters, right? And mm-hmm. some of those folks are driving three, four, five hours to get to the chapter that they're a member of to help with the test. Yeah, six, some of them, like, from Corpus to Dallas. 
it's like almost eight, seven, eight hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. Like when eight we hours. were out in Norton. Yeah. It was a jaunt to get Heartland, to. Heartland, right? Would have been. Heartland, maybe over in five to Denver Heartland, area in Colorado. Four. Yeah. Well, and uh, what was it to the grounds in Denver? Where they held the test? I don't know. We never actually went out there. Well, we, they oh. did. We did AKC there. AKC there, yes. Uh, a seven. Yeah. And we left one afternoon <laughs> to do that. Ooh. I'm out picking up a puppy, and Ethan's like, "You know, you want to go to an AKC test? All right. Didn't know it was going to be 16 hours in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Surprise! We're doing gotcha. what we uh, need to do, not what we can do. Yeah. So I, I and I also do understand that people have work schedules and and other responsibilities and all those things that I'm not picking in that direction, but do understand that it is not always easy and you do have to do the things that you need to do, not just what you can. Now, the other side of that comes into play with the conversation that we have with folks on a regular basis. They come out to our place. We have acreage right here. Okay. We walk out the door and we're in the grass field that everybody would love to be able to go train their dogs in. Right. Okay. Um, a at pond the same in the backyard, time, all the things. We do what we need to do, not what we can. And what we can do is everything. And that's going to be more in, in here too later. But we can do everything, and we don't need to do everything all the time. So that has to be balanced as well. Um, this was asked, what are we drinking? Gin. Ta-da! And tonics. But mine's in my fancy standing stone. One of a kind. Not one of a kind. There are 11 of them. Not in blue. Oh, it is one of a kind. Ha. One of a kind. All right. Number two, um, awareness. Okay. Awareness is huge. These are, I'm going to say, it's also really important. These are all very, very important parts of being a better dog trainer, which is what is going to, anybody that is working with their dog is a dog trainer. Now, until you receive money from somebody, you're not a professional dog trainer, but if anybody's giving you even a case of beer to watch their dog for the weekend, you are a professional dog walker at a minimum, okay? Um, payment, that is the stipulation, and that's it. It's, a, it's the Wild West out here of dog trainers, which is why there's so much variety in it. But um, The spice of life. Yes, yes, yes. Recognizing patterns is the key here. Awareness, recognizing what's happening in a pattern counts as two or more times. So if you see something happening, right? And it happens more than twice, two, if it happens more than once, two times, you are headed in the direction of a pattern and you need to make the decision. Not all patterns are bad. If every time I come to the door, my dog sits down and waits patiently, <laughs> good pattern. A, of a pattern to build, right? But if every time I come to the door, they blow past me, take me out at the knee and hit the screen door on the way out on cruising on through, whatever, that's a bad pattern. And it is still a pattern. Dogs Just be aware of it. are very good at figuring those things out. So you need to be aware. And one of the best ways to be aware during training sessions specifically, you can't video everything, but you can video training sessions. And this would be one of the first things that I recommend to anybody that is on Patreon that I am coaching, which is what we do there on how to train dogs or how to specifically work through your dog, is video your training sessions. I will review them if you send them to me, but I do not need to review every single training session. Um, but what you get used to being able to do is watch professionals train dogs. That's the videos, whether you buy a video watch them on YouTube, rent something somewhere, whatever. If you're watching a training video, which is a great way to learn, you are watching professionals work with dogs. And people say that on a regular basis. We make it look so easy. Well, we make very minimal mistakes. And when you make minimal mistakes, it's pretty easy to progress on the path that we lay out for everyone. Um, if you have something that you're doing that's preventing you from succeeding, you'll likely pick up on it yourself just by watching yourself. And we hear that regularly. Like I, I recognize after watching this, you know, putting this video together to send you by putting it, I mean, uploading, uploading it, it to YouTube, YouTube and watching it or whatever, right? So I just rewatched my training session and I hear that all the time. Like I talk too much. I pick that up right away. I'd be like constantly talking. I need to stop talking so much. I'm like, and yep. that allows you to become aware of what's going on in your training session, whether that's good things. Oh, wow. 
my timing was really good. No wonder my puppy figured this out really quickly. Or, oh, my timing was really off. I didn't even notice that during the session because you're so wrapped up. You're thinking about so many things that watching it later will make you more aware of that. And then you can be cognizant of not making those mistakes or being more aware of your timing when you're doing your next session. And Ethan and I will do this. You know, we do these live videos and other videos and we watch them back. We review every video and then it gets posted. But I become aware, maybe not a dog training thing, but I become aware of language. Man, I said, um, a lot in that video or like, or, you know, or whatever, gotcha, gotcha. or whatever the verbal pattern was that was repetitive Sorry. in a video. And I can be more aware that in the next video, I will intentionally try and not use those verbalisms, if you will. And, and the key to that is that we try, right? We're all trying to do better. And when you become aware of what's happening between you and your dog in the session, you do a better job at being able to work past that and improve. So um, number two is awareness. Number three, honesty. And this is one that I think that people struggle with the most. And it's not so much that it's difficult outside of wanting to be successful and loving your dog or whatever words, verbiage you want to apply to that specifically. But it's it's kind of that process, right? So dogs are incredibly good at anticipating things. They pick up on patterns, which is why we talked about ahead of before, recognizing those patterns, right? That being important because dogs already know that are patterns that they're developing or they're moving into and they're good at them. So when you are honest and can view, did they do, this is the key here, all right? Did the dog do what I ask them to do when I ask them to do it. That's what you're being honest about. And I, I mean, we see it all the time is it's more in person because when people bring dogs in for training though, it's like we, there's some kind of underlying thought that I'm going to come with my dog that I'm dropping off for your training program. And I'm going to show off to you how good they are or something. And I'm not picking, I'm just saying, like, I, I get where you're at. You don't want your dog to be a total wild hooligan, and you want to say, look, I've worked on some things, but they start doing, you know, oh, sit, 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 or whoa, 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 and then the dog sits down. It's like, good dog, yeah, all right, we're here. We're focusing now. Like, is yeah. that what you ask, right? No, so it's not. And did the dog move before you ask them, or did they anticipate that you were going to say, do this next. And they went ahead and did it before you asked them to do it. So, or is your dog taking you for a walk? Are they choosing the directions you're going because they're correct. kind of leading you or are you intentionally leading them and saying, Nope, we're going to turn now. We're going to, you know, change direction now, not when the dog is yep, and just absolutely. following them. So those are great examples of where we see people not being as honest with the situation. Oh, well, I was going to, you know, the dog's anticipating that you're going to release them and I was going to, so I guess it's okay. No, it would be better to say, I didn't say, okay, kennel back up, calm down, wait, maybe give them an opportunity to think that they're going to get released again and be, you know, honest with, no, this is when I'm releasing you. 100%. Honesty being the number three thing that you need to understand. It's um, it's a pretty important. <laughs> uh, on a scale of one to four, are there four things? No, here? that was three, honey. Are there, no, total. This is just four steps. Yeah, so. Three things. On a scale of one to three of the important things in building it's a It's in the top dog, three. It's in the top three, right? So, um. Next thing with building a better dog, and this is something that I think happens fairly regularly. It kind of falls into the category of doing what you can versus what you need to, but um, it's overdoing training. Now, one example, and this is something that could fall into announcements. Or something. We're going to tell this story. It's a we kind of did a little bit of reflecting based on what um, Charles finishing or not finishing because he's not done yet, but 
running and running and prizing. Um, doing a good job with Thunder at the utility test. Hit a little bit of an off day, but it still did a did a good job. A prize three utility dog is a dang nice dog in those categories. So, um, and became a, a master hunter and a junior hunter retriever and guided and had literally thousands of quail killed over him and pheasants in the year before and all of the things, right? So um, then before all of that even started, he did an entire YouTube series where I created a video called The Five Crossed It Out Six Steps of Woe Training where I did what typically takes a dog a week in one single training session and videoed the entire thing that you can see. It's the first time we started it with him and we worked through the entire process. He is a dog that falls into the... Definite outlier. Yeah, he's, I don't want to say one of a kind, but he's definitely in that, he's close to it. I mean, like he's looking at the one of the kind category and he's like, hey, you and I, buddy, <laughs> we're getting close here. Um, he loves to work. Absolutely loves to work. And if I would say he lives to work, man, like... He lives does. and breathes, working, training. Yep, he does. And so we're going to be talking in that specifically about Letting Dogs Be Dogs, which is a really good book by the monks of New Skeet and Mark. Um, I always want to say Wahlberg. It's not Mark Wahlberg. I know, Wahlberg. but I want to say it. Goldberg. Goldberg, Sorry. there we you go. Were very I, close. I was so, I mean, like, that's why I say I always want to say it. 65% of the way it, there. That's what I want to say, but I know it's not right. It's on Amazon. Wait, wait, wait. Pull up my affiliate link, though. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shoot. I'll put that in the comments right now. Um, But. If you buy this, I'll get 12 cents. Whatever. Anyway, so. Who is it by? Sorry. uh, Just type in. Let dogs dogs be dogs. Let dogs be dogs. And it should pop up. But. uh, So Thunder's in an. a different tier than most dogs because he literally has worked, trained, tested, been titled, and hunted for the last year. Started last June. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yep. Let dogs be dogs. Um, started last June when he went out to Bob Owens at Lone Duck to train and prepare to become a junior hunter retriever, which he did. Then I uh, got to help out with a seminar out there with Ethan and Bob that they did. And then he came back and prepped, f- finished prepping for his El Tesoro guiding career, uh, the start of his guiding career down there, where he spent four months guiding steady to wing shot and fall on quail. And like they were talking about, had thousands of birds worked over him. Including one afternoon hunt. <laughs> what? Yeah. So the king of the ranch said um, there was another group that came in a couple weeks before and said, uh, I cannot ha- have the record for the most birds shot in a hunt. So he said, put the birds out. He didn't take any guests. He took the ranch manager and the assistant ranch manager. And he looked at me and said, how can we kill the most birds? And I said, one pointing dog, one cocker. And he said, all right. And I grabbed thunder and catch. <laughs> and in an hour and 20 minutes-ish, we shot 98 birds over Shot thunder. and retrieve. Between catch and thunder, they and thunder marks better because the cocker's low and usually is on one bird. And he can watch the covey. Yep. yep. So I don't, he probably retrieved three quarters of them. Dang. And, and that's he, in one, one hunt. he didn't even make a mistake until in the 80s. Like, I didn't touch him till the 80s. So, uh, really... Really impressive. Um, mm-hmm. So he did that for four months, then came back, tweaked up, polished up anything that he might have been a little sloppy about from hunting, and then went through and ran Masters, became a Master Hunter. Thunder's still jumping on tables. It was one time you jump on one table, and all of a sudden you're a table jumper. Well, he did it to me, too, in <laughs> Wyoming. <laughs> so it wasn't just one time. <laughs> oh, uh, shoot. And then he finished up his Master Hunter title, worked with Charles a little bit to to put some stuff together from the versatile standpoint, because he also did some duck hunts down in Texas, not just quail, um, so had a really good start on his duck hunting and the versatility of that and then went and ran through utility got a prize three 
So a few things to potentially work on and try and rerun in um, next year. But he gets a break, guys. That was last June to this June that he did all of this. And now he's going to take a little breaky break and be a dog, be part of the family, live in the house, snuggle on the boys, snuggle in the couch, snuggle in the bed with us, watch TV, and just get to be a dog for a little bit. So we digress a little bit, but no, no, no. I'll show you one thing. This look where he got to. That's where he got to go play. That's cool. Last year when I was there, it was pretty neat place to, to get to run a dog in. It's crazy. Everywhere I go in the United States, I go, wow, this is beautiful. I mean, like, yeah, you know, and the people out there are probably like, yeah, it's just more grasslands, you know, Um, and that's. Because when people come out here, I don't want to say that Kansas isn't beautiful, but we're used to Kansas. But people come out here to pick up dogs, pick up puppies, drop off dogs, and they're like, wow, it is so gorgeous out here. And I makes me stop and look around and appreciate it. So I Absolutely. would agree with you. you know, um, and, and then when we go to the, the tall redwoods or you're in the mountains or, you know, like the mountains is pretty. But even if you go to Wyoming, it's like this is cool. This is really, really cool. We were there in the middle of the winter and it's like dead rolling hills pasture ground. It's <laughs> just like there's a vast openness is different right and we're pretty open here but it's just different it's all different it's very very cool one more brag on him sure oh thunderbird <laughs> that's cool that was down in texas he mm-hmm. looks good so anyway he's, like he's a pretty cool dude and it's um it's it's really neat to get to see all of them and get to to just like with vex with thunder to get to know them on an individual level and get to see some of the stuff that I don't get to see when they're in the kennel, like w- hanging out with him for four days in the camper, getting to see him roll around on me and try to cuddle in as tight as he could. And I'm like, dude, you're like smacking me in the face with your leg, but it's just, it's cool to get to see all that. So appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I did, you, I did see a comment um, from Jace Broda. Will you both be at the invitational this September? I see you had a dog qualify and we did. That was Vex, Mm -hmm. who we lost in December, passed away. So he is not, unfortunately, getting to go to the Invitational. All right. So uh, we won't be there this year, but hopefully next year we will. And we'll keep on keeping on. No, not next year. We'd had to qualify somebody this year. So there's still a year left. Quest, Splash, Muddy. Okay. I love my Questy pup, but. I'm just she's saying. got some work to do if she's going to get a prize won by August. I'm just saying. I'm running she's her some in work August. to do if she's going to prize at all. <laughs> oh, she, she's going to prize. <laughs> oh, man. She's going to be over in that marsh just looking at you going, hey, mama. Okay. But, Annie but and I will I'm be just there. saying, though, if Muddy does go and get a prize okay, won, she's not, going, she's to not going to the invitational because she would drown herself trying to make that blind because she, she can't swimming. swim hardly yeah. at all. Yeah. And she only has... Your Three eye, lobes yes. of her lungs left because of her median sternotomy having mm. to remove two lobes of her lungs, so I don't mm. want to push that. Well, splishy. Yeah, splash could do it. do it. We got splash, so yeah, fish, anyway. Fish out of water. So don't overdo it. This is probably one of the top mistakes that are made by everyone everywhere, okay? It's very easy to get on this train and be... Work, 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 and we're training and we're doing, and there is uh, the words that we use when we were talking about this the other day is developing, right? They need developed, and develop, developing involves exposure to things, and you need to be exposing to lots of different things and in adequate pieces, which needs to be adjusted to your individual dog, and that's where the special sauce comes in, the experience, the understanding of... I recognize you can do more, and I recognize you cannot right now. And we need to be able to move and adjust in that direction. So um, the last and la- and last, but very not la- I cannot make words. The last and very much not, that's because it's a stupid sentence I was trying to say. <laughs> last but you not said least. It, but n- yeah, there we go. Steps Just to a fully trained dog. There's four of them. We're going to break this them. down really quickly, but write it down, folks, because I won't say it more than once. Well, I'll say it Tonight. more times. But um, first, we're going to teach 
Second, we're going to differentiate. Third, we're going to generalize. And fourth, last, but the not very leaster, uh, we're going to prove things. All right, so what do we mean by teach? We utilize positive reinforcement. This will be a quick one, so we have a few minutes for some questions, okay? Um, teaching, we utilize positive reinforcement. Teaching is clicker training. That's where we're using this, and this is what we recommend, scientifically proven, to train dogs up to 50% faster. Now, you will get some pushback in the bird dog world specifically, but only the bird dog world, okay? Faster is not always better. Some of us like to take way longer than things need to take to teach them, all right? It just, it clicks. It's a toy it thing. It makes noise. What it is is consistent and clickers, all right? But you're going to teach with positive reinforcement. Once dogs understand everything, specific cues, we know sit, we know here, we know whoa, we know kennel, we know add some other things you want to teach in there, it's fine. Then we differentiate, and we'll add two um, individual behaviors to a session. So all of these beginning sessions are one behavior per session. Then we'll do two, then three, then four, then all of them um, that we can differentiate in one session. Now, mind you, all of these sessions are in the same place because dogs are placed and situationally oriented. We come into the foyer where the dog food is stored or whatever is easiest for you. And I like you train how you there. had to throw out that fancy word instead of entryway, the foyer. Then you um, are differentiating, but you're going to be in that same area. Then we're going to move from, now we know all of the things. We can differentiate. We can prove to you, basically, the dog can prove to you. I know every single word that you're saying, and I can demonstrate that. Without an overabundance of... <sighs> the overabundance non of... Nonverbal help. Nonverbal help, yeah. It says dogs pick up on cues. So a lot of times they'll see... My dog is fantastic at place training and they have to like point and walk their dog halfway across the room and the dog goes right to the dog bed with all of that help. You should be able to say kennel and the dog moving in a pretty reasonable distance all the way across a room or all the way down the entryway hallway or whatever you got. Um, and then we're going to generalize and that means take the show on the road. Move your training session where you can do all of these things to lots of different areas. And okay. keep in mind that dogs' brains are very place and situationally oriented. So mm -hmm. you it's may... the second time you've heard that. That's because it's important. That means you may have already taught all these behaviors. They know them. They've proven that they know them. They've differentiated them. And then you ask them to sit in your living room where you've never asked them to sit before because you've always asked them to sit in the kitchen or wherever. And they look at you like, I have no idea what you just said to me. Well... Then you have to work through that behavior and the next behavior in that place. Then you move it somewhere else. You move it outside where there's more distractions. And you have to be able to differentiate those behaviors in each of those places as well. Absolutely. Now, the again, dogs being place and situationally oriented. That's number three. Okay. Um, also is why dogs get very session smart very quickly. They understand how to work for their meal during the training session, and then all bets are off outside of the training session, which is what you should expect out of them and nothing more, okay? Um, in the beginning, until we move into the category of proofing, and proofing would be where we build a solid understanding of how to do things through higher distraction levels, and we utilize e-collars because, again, it's not only a clearer way to communicate with the dog, but it's faster, Okay. We build more consistency faster with less pressure on both you and the dog. It is the better path to take. Once you move through that, you have a dog that is consistent and can work through all of these different things and all of these different areas, and you have a way to communicate with them at a distance, and voila, you have a trained dog. That's it. It's that simple. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next time. Uh, speaking of next time, that is one thing people have been asking. Aaron, specifically, I know you asked me a lot. Um, you guys doing a live this week, live tonight? Um, 
check us out on social media. We'll make announcements typically on the story posts uh, through Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we also try and make those announcements on the newsletter, but it's hard because like I'll put a newsletter out on July 1st and have the best of intentions of we're going to do a live this night, this night, and this night. And then life happens and it's like, okay, we can't do it this night because such and such happened. So if you go to our channel and our channel, our YouTube channel would also be a good place to look. I don't believe that it shows up ahead of time oh. in the live category, but it does show up ahead of time in the playlist category, which if you go to playlists, oh, 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 nope, strike that podcasts. You click on the podcast section and you view the full list. It will show upcoming that are scheduled out there as well. So a couple places to if you can show that find yep. if we will be doing a live. And yeah, you can absolutely always message us too. I'm happy to answer your questions that way. Sometimes I just miss those messages until it's yep. too late. You but click on you go to Standing Stone Kennel's YouTube channel. Go to podcast. You click on that right there. View the full list, and it should show at the top. Shows all of them, but it should show at the top the upcoming one because once they're posted, they once they're scheduled, they get added to the playlist, and then that's where they would show up right there. So, so we can test that theory the next time we do it, just to be like, yeah, it is there. Uh, but that's what we're pretty sure happens. So, Ooh, look at that. We got real uncreative in the beginning. We thought that was a good idea. We're like, we will just be consistent. Well, except then it got confusing. It's like. Okay, Which was that last week or on? this week? Yeah. I don't know what just happened. So then we're like, eh, we got to spice it up again and change out our pictures. Sweet. Do we have any questions for I, this week? I did think I saw a few questions, um, and I just wanted to comment back. Uh, Jace, your sincere apologies, and you're so sorry. That is completely fine. Um, you know, we obviously loved Vex very much, um, miss him terribly, uh, feel like he got robbed of an awesome opportunity to go to the Invitational, whether he would have passed or not, um, is to be seen. I he would have. He would have. I mean, dang, if there was any dog that was going to pass, that was going to be Vex. But um, anything can happen on the day of. But completely understand, not everybody knows that he passed, um, but he was the dog that was supposed to go this September. But Charles and Annie are going to be out there. Um, Annie is the volunteer coordinator for the Invitational, guys. So they always, always, always need volunteers and help. Um, they These tests are getting, these Invitationals are getting bigger and bigger and more and more dogs are being um, qualifying and running. So it's just getting to be a really big production to put on. So always looking for volunteers. It is in Iowa? No, Ohio this year, right? Ohio, yeah. Ohio, yeah. I was like, Iowa, no. Ohio, I was thinking when we were thinking about Vex, we're like, of course. I heard that's the last he had to time go to it'll Ohio. ever be in Ohio. No. No. Just joking. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. There you go. You get a t-shirt. Ooh, do, sign me up. Do three days, you get two t-shirts. To be a volunteer? Up. Yeah. So we're not coming to Ohio. Do we have any bingos yet? Yeah. You, uh, yeah, I, and you get to see some of the best dogs. Yeah, and it's really close. cool when you get to to volunteer. You get to watch some really cool stuff. And I remember, so we went to an invitational the year before Nick's ran because mm -hmm. reading about it in the Ames and Rules book and trying to picture what is happening. Um, by just reading about it is completely different than watching it. And I wanted to have as good of understanding of what my dog was supposed to be able to do as I could. Uh, so that was really interesting. I remember going out there and it was so cold and rainy and we sat there and we shivered in Iowa for the entire test, but I watched every part of it cause I needed to know. And then I was like, how many calories did I burn just shivering? That's what I kept thinking. I was like, all I did was shiver. Can you imagine those dogs, man? Yeah. 2014 was the year of the sweatshirt. At Iowa. Yeah, you couldn't was, buy a sweatshirt or a coat they were any, within an hour of the ground. <laughs> uh, this here says somebody has a bingo. Are they still here? Who has the bingo? Well, bring it back up because it looked legit. I know. This is what I'm saying. I just want to know who has it. This person said I'm one away. Where did it go? It's not you. No. Gone like a freight train. 
Yes. 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 What was this one? Lock, stock, and two smoking ah, barrels. Oh, random movie reference. The newsletter. And I rolled my eyes like 5,000 times, so at Ethan, of course. Check that one multiple times. <laughs> so we do have a bingo if they're still here. I don't know. They might have gone home. They're like, I don't know who you are. We got them. And then did we, nope. we mention? Nope. No? Nope. No? <laughs> Was that one close? Somebody ask if four, nope. uh, four counted as bingo. <laughs> Not quite. Oh, this I somebody keeps asking if we're drinking beer. I'm sorry, we aren't drinking beer. But gin, you got the gin cocktail on that old cart. You yeah. are the worst scroller. If anybody watched how he's scrolling through these cards, they would get motion sickness. Let's go and ask answer some questions. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Let me scroll. I just tried to scroll. You, got you were scrolling on the bingo cards. Brian, you got to give us your card number. Oh. Oh, it's a Brian? It was me, but how do I share? If you give me the card Aha. number. Yep. We will we'll check you. We'll confirm. Thanks for the super chat again there. We appreciate yes, you, Aaron. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Very much. There was a question quite up there at the beginning because it was when we were talking about stuff and I was like, oh, we'll get to questions at the end. So like, it was up here somewhere during check-ins. was not a real question. Here it is. When clicker training, how do you handle a puppy who is not food motivated? Takes him 30 minutes to eat one and a half cups of food from Oof. Upland Express. So this is a great question um, and one that I think that um, more people struggle with than you would think. And it always looks so easy in our videos, right? Well, our puppies typically are very food motivated, but not always. Um, so Hawk would be a great example. He is being a little slow about his meals and his training sessions. And so my recommendation is, first of all, if your puppy is younger than eight weeks old and you're starting this process, it's just part of their development. They are not very mature yet. Um, so keep that in mind. But once your puppy hits eight weeks old, um, also keep in mind they've been eating probably with their litter mates for the last eight weeks. So being by themselves, eating out of someone's hand, all of that is new, different. So it may take them time to get comfortable with that process. But what we need to do is if they're getting distracted during a training session and they're wandering off and you have to keep calling them back and trying to refocus them, end the session. If they can only focus for five minutes and, and eat a quarter of a cup of food for their morning training session, that's it. That's your meal for the morning. And we will repeat this evening with your one cup of food or whatever their meal portion is. Typically, when we're sending home an eight-week-old puppy, they're eating one cup of Yukonuba Puppy Pro in the morning and one cup of the Puppy Pro in the evening. And then that adjusts as they get older um, and they're gaining weight and things like that. But then they get the one cup offered in the evening. We're not going to give them 1.75 cups in the evening. No, mm -hmm. they get the it's one cup forever. portion and the one portion. Yeah, gone and forever. then um, the next morning, they mean they'll be a little hungrier and more willing to work. They'll stay focused longer. Um, and it may take a little bit of the tough love, like we talk about it, for a day or two while they're not getting every single meal, um, you know, slow fed to them over the course of 30 minutes and coaxed and prodded and coddled to be like, oh, come on, just eat one more little kibble. Um, just little tough love, say, nope, you're, you're distracted, you're done paying attention, and the session's over, and they'll get better at it. It won't and take about a day or two. Now, the key with it is there is some, uh, there's some pretty negative... There's always somebody that's got something to say, right? It's uh, 2023, and the internet's been around long enough that everybody's figured out how to say something on it. But the there's some pretty negative opinions about withholding food from dogs, and that will be talked about on different training forums and websites and whatever else. And that I agree with. Withholding food from dogs to build motivation is a bad idea. Okay, and what that would mean is I'm not going to offer you food for two days or a day and a half or whatever, and then you'll be real hungry when we come back around to trying to feed you. Not okay. We are offering food. The dog is saying, I'm not interested in it. And They're instead refusing. Of, yes. Instead of saying, 
oh, we'll try and figure out how to baby you into eating more or whatever. We just say, okay, it's done. And then they themselves figure out, ooh, maybe I should eat a little more of that when they offer it to me because now I'm kind of hungry after missing a meal or half a meal or whatever, okay? So that's the big difference there. Yes, and honestly, sometimes you have puppies that are kind of the complete opposite, and they're not skipping meals, but they are almost overdriven, overamped for their meals, and they can't even focus until they get, you know, a handful of food or a couple handfuls of food or half of their meal in their tummies, and then they can actually settle down and think. And I've had puppies, I think in videos that I have said, okay, this puppy, I'm giving them, you know, a portion of their meal first so that we can gain some focus, get them to pay attention a little bit more and not be so frantic. It also helps with puppies that are overly bitey and trying to bite, bite, bite at your hands because they feel or they think that they're famished, even though they're definitely not. They're getting the appropriate amount of food, um, but they definitely um, can have both ends of that spectrum. Uh, Linda here says that she definitely talks too much and her friends say that she should wear duct tape. Better than duct tape, you should get hostage tape. There's a product out there. Design comes in small pieces. You put it over your mouth so that you can sleep better, apparently. What? I thought, okay. I thought you were, like, planning a kidnapping or something. You caught me no, worried. No, it's a real thing. It's I a real d- thing. I did not know this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will the internet be able to get you to do in your life today? Uh, tape your mouth shut while you sleep, apparently. Why is- would you do that? Um, because your body is supposedly, this is the science, if you can use that S word involved in this. I don't know. I haven't looked into the, the information. But a lot of people are mouth breathers. And in order for your body to reset and do what it's supposed to properly, you're supposed to breathe through your nose. So you tape your mouth shut. Would that make you snore more? Don't you snore through your mouth? Yeah. Oh, right, your mouth. Oh, I don't snore, so I don't know. I don't know these things. I don't either. Do you want to see it? Yes. Why not? (laughs) This strongest, most comfortable mouth tape on the market. One year supply for one hundred and ninety nine dollars. Hey oh. Oh my gosh. Guaranteed money back. I'm going to buy a one-year supply. When do I get my money back? See, there, 18 plus 18% oxygen. What does that word say? Absorbed. Oh, you can <laughs> absorb more oxygen. <laughs> but it's little on it's your little. screen. <laughs> it really is. Squint at it, honey. Uh, Somebody said, can you please say Nix and show a gift from a fan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that was for a bingo card. Mm. Uh, is that better? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absorbed. So uh, there you go. Hostage tape. Much better. The strongest, most comfortable mouth tape on the market. Okay, here's a question, a real question. Get off the hostage tape thing. Aquaman's Reef Army. How much do you allow puppies in the litter to play, fight, learn to use their mouths with each other? So um, we spend a lot of time with these puppies, but they do get unsupervised time to nap and play and things like that um, in their puppy pens and their whelping box. You know, we're not literally sitting there staring at them. 24, 365, well, no, it wouldn't be quite that long because they're only here for eight weeks. But we're not there every day, every hour of the day watching them. But when we are in there and we are cleaning and feeding other puppies or feeding mamas and doing laundry and all the things that allow us to be around that litter, if I see excessive posturing, excessive dominance, excessive, you know, trying to establish pack roles, I interrupt it. We don't let the dogs actually establish those roles because we don't need puppies leaving their litter already in a submissive position and a dominant position. I want them to be pretty even across the board as much as we can help and allow that. Um, so if somebody's got somebody by the ear and they're dragging them halfway across the puppy pen, I, I interrupt that behavior. Oh, shoot. That's funny. What, did you, what? What's funny? Uh, if only I had hostage tape on my bingo card. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I did. I did double check. Brian Hayes, you're the winner. All you need to do is message me on Patreon. Awesome! Congratulations! We got to give away a Coranda bed, and I will give you a code that allows you to go onto the store and order, so you can select a Coranda bed of your choosing. 
and which is just two sizes, and that's it. Doesn't uh, we? You don't get too many choices, but nah, you can pick a size. But you can pick one. Yep. Um, Thanks for playing. Anything against force fetch training a year old Brittany? I do not force fetch any dog ever, Train. especially not Brittany. Trained retrieve. So we just have a different verbal. It's verbiage. Yeah. And I believe that verbiage is important, which is why we make a point of this, including everybody in the program and that. that I mean, if you talk to Charles, here, if you talk to Jess, if you talk to Tessa. It is language. We use cues, not commands. Formal retrieving work. I like the term formal retrieving work mm-hmm. best because it's, it's the whole picture. It is. And that's what it is. There is the table work where we're working on fetching. There's the groundwork, and then there are applying that applying to different that to scenarios, the field and marking drills, and all of the stuff. And and it's going in and out of the pond, work. like there are so many places that that formal retrieving work, the trained retrieve, needs to be applied for the generalization and proofing of that behavior. So if you get a dog that has gone through the entire trained retrieve process on the table, you need to apply that knowledge, that behavior, to the field to the retrieving drills, the marking drills, to duck drags, to water retrieves, all of the places because every place is new. Mm -hmm. They may do perfect in the field and then you take them to the water and that transition of leaving the water interrupts that. And then they think they need to stop, drop it, and shake off. Well, you need to be able to prove that behavior in that situation. So So I wouldn't have any qualms about doing... Former Euros. retrieving work with a year old Brittany. Yeah, sorry. Twelve months is a great time. Mm-hmm. Mm, this is an interesting <laughs> one. So, what's up, uh, <laughs> Miss Kelly? Hostage tape rolled off the tongue way too easily. <laughs> well, what Ethan does for fun in his free time is studies. This is the first that Cat has heard of hostage tape. <laughs> is just randomly hostage tape people up, okay? That's just, I no. mean, if you've been looking at, I'm on the, the top 100 list okay, somewhere. So we had a conversation about sleep or something, and then it, it our came phones up. listened, and it put it in our ads, because that's where I saw it. Mm-hmm. Creepy. Uh, Brendan Mills said tips for getting my lab to stop howling when I start running a goose call around him. So this is anticipation, um, of something exciting, something fun happening. And also, um, dogs need to become desensitized to things. So beeper callers, goose calls, um, getting to make retrieves every single time a bumper is thrown, things like that. Dogs need to learn patience. Um, And it can be part of your training. So if you go out to throw some retrieves for your lab, incorporate some goose calls in there. Have them be patient through that process uh, so that you can start – I don't want to necessarily say desensitizing, but getting them, you know, used to the sound um, and understand that that isn't their cue to get wound up. That's exactly it. So train like you hunt so you don't have to train while you hunt. I said that 10 years ago, and I don't think it really applies, but it kind of applies. I think it does. I, I, th- I think that there is some valid arguments for that. Sweet. All righty, folks. That is the time that we have for this evening. <laughs> uh, no more comments from anyone. This is hilarious. Y'all are great. We, we really love... <laughs> We really, really, really enjoy doing this when we get to, and we are sorry when we miss, but uh, we will keep you posted via where we just mentioned, the playlist showing upcoming events. We will add it where we can, and if you can make it, we'd love to join you. Um, Trying to deep dive into a topic and answer a few questions when we get toward the end of that. Uh, one of the cool things that is kicking off is the Standing Stone podcast will be rolling out. Um, Charles will be heading up hosting that, so there will be a large variety of things going on to be able to um, hammer out the content uh, train, if you will. But it'll give you something to listen to on Mondays. You're going to get some of the old ones bopping back through, and then some really, really interesting um, new podcasts coming. This is... Uh, the ideas behind that is is not 
solely based around training philosophies or training ideas or training in itself, but more about what we the do. The big picture. Yeah, what we do, why we do it. Um, from is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, absolutely. From the history to the hunting trips to the testing, the training, the all of it and and running a business and and taking care of dogs and finding work life balance all of that it's not just a training podcast it's a it's a life of dogs podcast yeah absolutely and yes uh Aaron exclusively on Spotify we signed a big deal with them which is why we're going to work on it <laughs> no. wait 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 what we'll be <laughs> we'll be everywhere yeah we'll be we'll be everywhere Spotify will be there um We'll be working with GDIY. They have a hosting um, collective. Collective, yeah. I think so. Yep. Yeah. We so got stuff to learn, but we're getting into it again. Absolutely. So thank you guys for joining us. I am Cat the Dog Trainer. I'm the guy with the pink gun. Hostage tape. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got the microphone. I was trying not to, but you were you're were like basically right there. We'll see y'all later. Kind of.